BGMC. The biblical truth lives here. scriptures foretold of the anointed one, Yeshua HaMashiach. The Messiah Yeshua came to call the people back to the truth of His word and to follow that righteous path. Yeshua then called Jewish men to be His disciples, and after His death and resurrection, those Jewish men told the world about the Jewish Messiah. Now, after 2,000 years, Beth Goyim Messianic Congregation has that same calling of those Jewish men telling all people, both Jew and Gentile, about the proper ancient path, teaching the Route 66 King's Highway from Genesis through to Revelation, and how you need and can get back to the proper roots of the faith and a closer walk with God. Now, let's hear the message. Let's go get a blessing. Thank you all for coming to Beth Goyim, Messianic Congregation, where Jew and Gentile worship Yeshua the Messiah together as one people. And we're in Ephesians chapter 1, part number 5. City Gate Messianic Bible Study, part number 5. All right. We're going to start with a, uh, we're on slide number 68. Vamos a comenzar con la diapositiva número 68. And we're studying the book of Ephesians, chapter 1. Y estamos estudiando el capítulo, el libro de Efesios, capítulo 1. We're going to catch up, so we're going to read verses 1 through 12 to refresh our memory. Para refrescar nuestras memorias, vamos a leer desde el versículo 1 hasta el 12. All right, so Ephesians, chapter 1, verse 1 through 12. Eh, Efesios, capítulo 1, desde el versículo 1 hasta el 12. From Shaul, by God's will, an emissary of Messiah, Yeshua 2, God's people living in Ephesus. That is, those who are trusting in the Messiah, Yeshua. Grace to you and shalom from God our Father and Lord, Yeshua the Messiah. Praise be Jehovah, Father of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, who in the Messiah has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heaven. And in the Messiah, he chose us in love before the creation of the universe to be holy and without defect in his presence. He determined in advance that through Yeshua the Messiah, we would be his sons in keeping with his pleasure and purpose, so that we would bring him praise commensurate with the, with the glory of the grace he gave us through the beloved one. In union with him, through the shedding of his blood, we are set free. Our sins are forgiven. This accords with the wealth of the grace he has lavished on us, all wisdom and insight. He has made known to us his secret plan by which his own will will be designed beforehand in connection with the Messiah. And will put into effect when the time is ripe, the plan to place everything in heaven and on earth under Messiah's headship. In union with him, with him, we are given an, an inheritance. We who picked, who were picked in advance according to the purpose of the one who affects everything in keeping with the decision of his will. All right, let's get to the PowerPoint. Vamos a ir a la diapositiva. If you have the PowerPoint, if you don't have the PowerPoint, just download it. Uh, send me an email and I'll send you a link. Eh, si no, si vamos a ver la diapositiva y si no tienen la diapositiva pueden descargarlas y si no tienen cómo hacerlo entonces mándenos su email y su correo electrónico y nosotros les enviaremos la diapositiva. We are on slide number 68. Estamos en la diapositiva número 68. And we're doing section number 5. Y estamos en la sección número 5. Verse 13 and 14. Versículo 13 y 14. This section is called Who Guarantees Our Inheritance Until We Come Into Possession of It. Esta sección se llama quien... Um, top, uh, top over here. Okay. 
quien garantiza nuestra, nuestras posesiones hasta que entremos en la quien garantiza nuestra herencia hasta que tomemos posesión de ella. And one of the things that we uh, need to look at Una de las cosas que debemos ver is uh, what we're talking about is an inheritance. Eh, de lo que estamos hablando aquí es de una herencia. An inheritance is something that some people work for. Eh, una herencia es algo que alguien trabaja en pos de ella. One of the things about America that was so beautiful algo de la, alguna de las cosas de los Estados Unidos que era, que era tan hermosa is that, you know, our, our Grandparents and our great grandparents worked hard. Que nuestros abuelos y nuestros eh, bisabuelos trabajaron muy duro. And they lived something called the American dream. Y ellos eh, vivieron algo que se llama el sueño americano. And that American dream was to buy a house or buy land and live on it. Y el sueño americano era o comprar una casa o una un pedazo de tierra y vivir en ella. And then. Um, Once they passed on from this life to the next, they would hand down that inheritance. Y una vez que ellos pasaron de esta vida a la próxima, ellos uh, dejaban eso como herencia. And you would get that inheritance if your mother, or your grandfather, or grandmother liked you. Y ellos dejaban esa herencia si tu abuelo o tu abuela eh, gustaban de ti. Um, I mean, sometimes they were fair to all the children, even if they didn't like them. <laughs> ellos algunas veces fueron justos fueron y ellos eh, 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 dejaban la herencia para todos los hijos aún así si ellos no le caían bien but it, an inheritance was something to look forward to una herencia era algo que todos buscaban eh, eh, esperaban por eso that it was something that uh, some children longed for es algo de que muchos eh, muchos eh, hijos anhelaban. Like I can't get, wait to get mom and dad's house. Como decir, oh, yo no puedo esperar hasta que mi ma te tener la casa de mi, pa de mi uh, madre y mi padre. Or grandma and grandpa's house. O la casa de mi abuelo o mi abuela. Or I can't wait till they die so I can sell it and make lots of money. O tal vez digan, oh, no puedo esperar hasta que se mueran para entonces ven luego vender la casa y obtener dinero. Now, why are we talking about this? Ahora, ¿por qué estamos hablando sobre esto? Because we need to understand what an inheritance is. Porque necesitamos entender qué, si, qué es una herencia. And because we're talking about what an inheritance is. Y porque estamos hablando de qué es una herencia. Okay. I'm going to answer people that are not seeing us on YouTube. <laughs> Shalom. One Good second. Good to see you again. Thank you. The door is locked by the elevator. Oh, it's not. Oh, it's not open. The back door. Oh, because the people downstairs probably has it closed. Uh, um, not the outside. The, to take the elevator. The the elevator one. Yeah. Yes, there is in oh. the building. YouTube has stopped us. All right. We just started. Okay, so, see, people are, that are close by can come and experience Bible study, but they want to sit at home and experience the beautiful sunlight. Anyway, so an inheritance. Entonces, una herencia. An inheritance is something to look forward to. Eh, una herencia es alguien que muchas personas eh, eh, esperan por ella. And, and come into possession of this inheritance is something to look forward to. Y el tomar posesión de esa herencia es algo que muchos esperan por ese momento. So let's, now that we sort of have a little concept of what an inheritance is. Ahora eh, que tenemos como quien dice un pequeño concepto de, que se de lo que se trata una herencia. Because one of the things we need to always understand is language. Porque una de las cosas es que nosotros debemos entender es el, el idioma. Okay, and language is very important. Y los idiomas son muy importante. Talking the same language is important. Hablar el mismo idioma es muy importante. And having the same definition of that language is very important. Y tener la misma definición de ese, de, de ese, de ese idioma es muy importante. So if you don't understand what an inheritance is, entonces si tú no entiendes qué significa una herencia, you don't understand what 
the rest of the book of Ephesians is all about. Entonces tú no vas a entender de qué se trata el resto de la carta del, del libro de los Efesios. All right, so let's look at Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Entonces vamos a leer el, el, el libro de Efesios capítulo 1 del versículo 3 y 14. Furthermore, you who heard the message of truth, the good news offering you deliverance, and putting and put your trust in the Messiah were sealed by him with the promise Ruach HaKodesh who guarantees our inheritance until we come into possession of it. And thus, bring him praise commensurate with his glory. Okay, so now we're looking at, well, what is the message of truth? The first part is, what is the message of truth? Aquí vamos a ver la primera parte de esto, que es, eh, significa, que significa, eh, que, cuál es el mensaje de la verdad. The message of truth is that Messiah has come. El mensaje de la verdad es que el Mesías ha venido. And Messiah did not come to start a new Christian religion. Y el Mesías no vino para comenzar una nueva religión cristiana. Now what is the purpose? What, what, what did Messiah come to do? This is always a great discussion. Esto es una gran discusión eh, muchas veces. ¿Qué fue, ¿A qué fue que vino el Mesías? What is the message of truth? ¿Cuál es el mensaje de la, de la, de ver, de la verdad? So if I ask uh, most people what Messiah came to do, eh, si yo le pregunto a muchas a la mayoría de las personas qué vino a ser el Mesías, he said, um, it is said, uh, he came to set us free. Eh, la mayor parte de veces se dice ellos di, responden eh, él vino a, a, a ponernos en libertad. Set us free to do what? Eh, a ponernos en libertad para hacer qué? And set us free from what? Y por ponernos en libertad de qué? So he set us free from sin so that we could keep sinning. Entonces él nos puso libertad para seguir pecando. Oh. Nos puso en libertad para seguir pecando. So that, that's what most Gentiles think. Eso es lo que la mayoría de los gentiles piensan. We're free from the law. Estamos libres, expuestos de la ley. We can eat whatever we want now. Ahora podemos comer todo lo que queramos. We can worship whatever day we want now. Y ahora que podemos adorar en el día que queramos. We can make up our own fake holy days, holidays. Y, po y podemos también hacer nuestro propio día santo eh, de ficticio. Okay. So then would the father give that type of child an inheritance? ¿Será que el padre le daría un, a un hijo como tal una herencia? It's like, you know, you've gone to college. Eh, has ido a la universidad. You've gone to schooling. Tú has ido a, a, a la escuela. What do you do with that, that information now? Ahora, ¿qué haces tú con esa información? If you've done nothing with that education. Si no has hecho nada con esa educación. Like most millennials do. Como la mayoría de los milenios. Then you just spent a lot of money. Mileniales. Then you just spent a lot of money for no reason at all. Entonces solamente acabaste de invertir mucho dinero por nada. So, now let's take that concept. Ahora vamos a tomar ese concepto. You heard the message of truth. Tú escuchaste el mensaje de la verdad. What do you do with the message of truth? ¿Qué haces tú con el mensaje de la verdad? Okay, so let's read verse 13 again because it's very important. Vamos a leer el versículo 13 una vez más porque es muy importante. Because the reason we're spending so much time on chapter 1 la razón por la cual estamos eh, eh, tomando mucho tiempo en el capítulo 1 es porque is that you cannot understand the rest of the book of Ephesians without a firm grasp of chapter 1. Es que no vas a poder entender el resto del libro de Efesios sin tener eh, un, un aga, o sea, sin haber tenido una base en cuanto a, a la carta. And the reason I'm saying that is I started to work on chapter 2. Y la, ya empecé a trabajar en el, en el capítulo número 2. And I've had, through the 20 years of doing this, I've had a number, I can't tell you how many conversations with Christians. Y a través de los años que tengo eh, trabajando en el ministerio, que son como 20 años, yo no, no te podría decir cuántas, cuánto tipo de conversaciones tuve con cristianos. Who quote the middle of Ephesians chapter 2. Quienes citaron a uh, la, la mitad del al, al medio libro, en la mitad del libro de Efesios, del capítulo 2. Okay, so 
they misunderstand chapter 2 to their own problem. Ellos eh, malinterpretan el capítulo 2 de acuerdo a, sus, a su propio criterio, a su propio problema. Now, what do I mean by that? ¿Qué, qué quiero dejar dicho con esto? It's going to cost them their eternal soul. Esto le va a costar a alguien su, su alma eter, eterna. Because you need to understand what this message of truth is. Tú debes, debes de entender qué significa este mensaje de la verdad. Truth is that we're all sinners. La verdad es que so, todos somos pecadores. And look at the next part of verse 13. Y veamos la siguiente parte del versículo 13. Furthermore, you heard the message of truth, the good news offered, offering you deliverance. Okay? Deliverance from who and what? Eh, ser puesto en libertad de quién y, y de qué? Okay, deliverance from who? El, el ser liberado de quién? That would be Satan and his minions. Esto sería Satanás y sus secuaces. What are we be delivering, are we delivered from? De qué se nos fue puesto en libertad? And that was from sin. Y esto fue del pecado. How do I know what sin is? ¿Cómo sé yo qué es el pecado? Well, Messiah Yeshua said what sin is. Bueno, el Mesías Yeshua dijo, ¿qué es el pecado? Because he, he was asked, what is the greatest commandment? Porque él preguntó, ¿cuál es el, el gran mandamiento? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Ama a tu Dios con toda tu mente, con toda tu alma, con todas tus fuerzas. So if you continue sinning, y si tú sigue pecando, then you didn't believe the message of truth. Entonces tú no creíste el mensaje de la verdad. Okay, the message of truth is Messiah was calling us back home. El mensaje de la verdad es que el Mesías nos estaba llamando de regreso a, la, a casa. Now let's read verse 13 again. Vamos a leer versículo 13 una vez más. Furthermore, you who heard the message of truth, the good news offering you deliverance, and put your trust in the Messiah, were sealed by him with the promise Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, so now let's look at part number 3 of verse 13. Ahora vamos a ver la parte número 3 del versículo 13. See, we're putting our trust in Yeshua the Messiah. Estamos poniendo nuestra confianza en Yeshua el Mesías. What do you mean by putting your trust in him? ¿Qué significa, qué, qué, qué te dejo, eh, qué significa eh, poner tu confianza en él? You're believing what he said. Tú estás eh, creyendo lo que él dijo. And this is what Shaul, Paul, is trying to tell this baby messianic congregation. Y esto es lo que Pablo o Shaul le está tratando de decir a esta congregación que aún está, es bebé. Or he's, you know, telling those uh, Gentile converts to Messianic Judaism. O él está diciendo a, a estos um, gentiles eh, que se ha convertido al, mes, al mesianismo eh, judaico. De, and he's, al mesianismo. And he's telling the, the, the Jews that are now believing in Messiah. Y él está diciendo a los judíos que ahora es cre, están creyendo en el Mesías. That you need to be, that you're believing what Yeshua said. Que tú estás creyendo lo que dijo Yeshua. Now, what did Yeshua say? Ahora, ¿qué dijo eh, eh, Yeshua? He said that not one jot or tittle will be missing from the law until heaven and earth pass away. Que ni una tilde ni una jota o, o una coma pasará de la ley hasta que pasen los cielos y la tierra. Okay, so the message of truth Entonces, el mensaje, de, el mensaje de la verdad is Messiah has come and we're still under the law. Que el Mesías eh, vino y aún estamos bajo la ley. And by following Yeshua, Pero por seguir a Yeshua, you will be delivered from sin by following him. Entonces tú vas a ser liberado del pecado por seguirlo a él. Okay. Deliverance means that you leave the sin. El liber, puesto en libertad significa que tú vas a dejar el pecado. And follow the truth. Y, se, y vas a seguir la verdad. But if you don't leave or know what sin is, Pero si tú no sabes lo que es el pecado, how do you follow the truth? ¿Cómo es que tú sigues la verdad? Okay, it's a very interesting 
point that we need to understand. Es un punto muy interesante que debemos entender. By putting your trust in Messiah, por poner tu confianza en el Mesías, you're not only following his uh, his words, no estás tú solamente eh, siguiendo sus palabras, you're also following his physical example. Pero también estás tú siguiendo su ejemplo físico. And you can never go wrong with following that example. Y tú nunca puedes estar errado eh, al seguir ese ejemplo. Okay. Now, why do you have to put your trust in Messiah? Ahora, ¿por qué debes tú de poner tu confianza en el Mesías? Because Yeshua said Porque Yeshua dijo that if you don't proclaim me before man, I won't proclaim you before my father and his angels. Porque Yeshua dijo, si tú no me proclamas a mí en frente de los hombres, tampoco te proclamaré yo en frente del Padre y los ángeles. And Yeshua also said when asked the question, y Yeshua también dijo cuando se le hizo la pregunta, Who are my brothers and sisters? ¿Quiénes son, eh, ¿quiénes son mis hermanos y hermanas? Those who do what my father wants. Aquellos que hacen la voluntad de mi Padre. Now, The congregation in Ephesus must have known all this information. La congregación en Éfeso, ellos debieron haber sabido eh, esta, esta información. Because, and why do you know that's true? ¿Y por qué sabemos que esto es verdad? Because look at the end of verse, we're going to read all of verse 13, but we're going to focus on the end. Eh, vamos a leer el versículo 15 por completo, pero nos vamos a enfocar en, al, en, en, la, en el final de este versículo. Furthermore, you who heard the message of the truth, the good news offering you deliverance, and put your trust in the Messiah, were sealed by him with the promised Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, so here Shaul is talking about the Ruach HaKodesh. Aquí está Pablo hablando sobre el Ruach HaKodesh o el Espíritu Santo. Okay, now... A lot of Jews, you know, don't really focus on the Ruach HaKodesh. Muchos de los judíos en realidad no se enfocan en el Ruach HaKodesh o Espíritu Santo. It's not something real big in the Tanakh. Esto no es algo que es eh, grande o, o que tiene mucho énfasis en el Nuevo Testamento. It is more prevalent in the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament. Eh, I said something wrong. Eh, no, es, eh, no vemos que esto es muy, y, y no se le hace mucho énfasis al Ruach HaKodesh en el Tanakh, que es el Antiguo Testamento, y, pero sí se le da mucho énfasis en el Brej Hadashah, que es el Nuevo Testamento. Now, what did Yeshua say that the job of the Ruach HaKodesh is the Holy Spirit? Ahora, ¿qué fue lo que dijo Yeshua? ¿Cuál era el trabajo del Ruach HaKodesh o el Espíritu Santo? To remind you of everything he said. El recordar, el recordarte todo lo que, el, el, lo que Yeshua dijo. Okay, so this is the message of truth. Este es el mensaje de la verdad. That if you follow Yeshua in spirit and in truth, de que si sigues al Mesías en espíritu y en verdad, then you will be delivered from your sin. Entonces tú vas a ser liber, li, pues, eh, puesto en libertad de tu pecado. Because You're following, you're leaving Egypt and now you're following Messiah. Porque tú estás dejando a Egipto y ahora estás siguiendo al Mesías. That's what Shavuot is all about. That's what we're going to learn about this weekend. De eso se trata el Shavuot y vamos a estar aprendiendo de sobre esto. Okay. Este fin de semana. It's not Pentecost. No es el Pentecostés. That just means 50 in Greek. En el griego esto simplemente significa 50. Okay. Now... The promised Ruach HaKodesh, la promesa de Ruach HaKodesh, were in, in verse 13 of Ephesians chapter 1. Estamos en el, en el versículo 13 del capítulo 1. He is not the comforter, he is the counselor. Él no es el, el, que, el, te, el que te conforta, más él es el consolador. Okay, and, and I think a lot of Spanish translations it says comforter and not counselor. Eh, creo que muchas de las traducciones en español dicen el confortador, más no el, el consolador. A comforter, somebody said, it says you, it's okay to sin. Eh, eh, uno que conforta es aquel que dice, oh, está bien el pecar. You know, after you crash your car, and the comforter is like, it's going to be okay. Eh, después que hay, has tenido un accidente con tu auto y alguien viene y te dice, oh, todo va a salir bien. A counselor is a lawyer. 
un, un, uno que consuela es un, un, abogado. un abogado. Okay. And a, a lawyer gives you a, tells you what the law says. Y un abogado te dice, ¿qué dice la ley? But you have to make the choice. Pero tú debes de hacer, escoger la, 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 tu decisión. It's your decision. Es tu decisión. Okay. So here, this verse 13 is all about your decision. Aquí en el versículo 13, todo se trata de tu decisión. The message of truth is your decision to believe it. El mensaje de la verdad es tu decisión el creerlo. Or not believe it. O no creerlo. The good news is you can leave your sin if you want to follow Messiah. Las buenas nuevas es de que tú puedes eh, dejar tu pecado si quieres seguir al Mesías. Did we start the camera? Yes. I did. Hello. Nice to see you. Yeah. Okay. Go? Okay, good. Just wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay. Putting your trust in Messiah is personal. Poner tu confianza en el, en el Mesías es personal. It's not something that can be forced on you. Es algo que no se puede forzar. It's like um, a heart for wanting to do something for God. Es como un corazón para querer hacer las cosas para Jehová. You know, a lot of people don't want to do anything for God and, and if they're not being pushed to do it. Hay muchas personas que no quieren que no quieren hacer las cosas para Jehová al menos que se le empuje para hacerlo. Putting your trust in Messiah. Poner tu confianza en el Mesías. Is realizing that he took a beating so that you didn't have to. Es realizar y y y, y, el, y el conocer de que el Mesías tomó eh, fue, to, eh, tomó mucho azotes para que así tú pues, fuese puesto en libertad. And he's, he's allowing you to grab hold of his seat seat so that you can be delivered. Entonces, él te está permitiendo que tú sostengas sus seat seats para que tú puedas ser puesto en libertad. Okay, but it's your choice. Pero esa es tu decisión. Sealed by him means that he's never going to leave you. El ser sellado por él, eso significa que nunca él te va a dejar. Okay. The, the Ruach HaKodesh's job is to lead you in the laws. El Ruach HaKodesh, el Espíritu Santo, el trabajo de él es guiarte en las leyes. Now, I take time tonight because by next week we're going to start chapter 2. Yo estoy tomando mi tiempo esta noche es porque la próxima semana vamos a estar eh, comenzando el capítulo número 2. If you don't have these foundational understanding. Si tú no tienes estos fundamentos básicos then you're going to fall into the trap of the evil one and get lost for eternity. Entonces, tú vas a caer en la trampa del enemigo y vas a estar perdido por tu eternidad. Now, let's read verse 13 and 14. Ahora vamos a leer el versículo 3 y 14. Because you need to now put the two pieces of the puzzle together. Porque ahora debemos unir las dos piezas del rompecabezas. Furthermore, you heard the message of the truth. The good news offering you deliverance and put your trust in the Messiah were sealed by him with the promised Ruach HaKodesh, who guarantees our inheritance until we come into possession of it. And thus, bring him praise commensurate with his glory. Amen? Amen. Now, you, the only way you're going to come into this inheritance. Ahora, de la única manera que tú vas a poder eh, lograr obtener esa herencia... You know, because it's saying, until you come into possession of your inheritance. Porque dice, hasta que tú tomes posesión de tu herencia. That means it can be lost. Esto significa que esto puede echarse a perder. Because Pero, what if you don't get there? ¿Qué tal que tú no llegues allá? A ese, a ese punto. What if you only say you love Messiah, but don't follow him? Pero, ¿qué tal que tú digas que tú amas al Mesías, mas tú no lo sigues? What if you say you love Messiah, but do nothing to help his kingdom? ¿Qué tal que tú digas eh, que tú amas al Mesías y no haces nada para, eh, para ayudar a su reino? You think that's good enough? ¿Tú crees que esto es suficiente? Say you love somebody, but don't do anything for them. Y el, como el decir que tú amas a alguien, mas no hace nada por ellos. How do you think that would work in a marriage? 
¿Cómo piensas tú que esto trabajaría en un, en un uh, matrimonio? You know, let's say my wife says she loves me. Digamos que mi esposa me dice, oh, yo te amo. But she doesn't do anything uh, in the house. Y ella no hace nada en la casa. She just sits around and listens to Alex Jones all day long. Y ella solamente se sienta en el hogar y escucha a Alex Jones todo el día. Or if you're liberal, CNN. Y si tú eres un, un, eh, un liberal, vas a escuchar a CNN. And what if she doesn't do what she's supposed to do in the home? Y qué tal que ella no haga lo que ella está supuesta a hacer en el hogar. Or let's take it on a lot of men's side. Eh, vamos a tomarlo por la parte de los hombres. Because I've heard this throughout the years of ministering. Porque yo lo he escuchado esto a través de los años de estar ministrando. I love you, honey. But yo te amo, mi amor. It was just one transgression. Pero simplemente fue una sola transgresión. But he says he loves her, but he was sleeping with another woman. Eh, pero él dice que la ama, más él durmió con otra mujer. You need to understand this. Tú necesitas entender esto. Because an inheritance is something to look forward to. Porque una herencia es algo que tú que querás eh, eh, es, eh, querer llegar a ese, a ese momento de, de, alcance, de, de, de obtenerla. But a, an inheritance is only given. Pero una herencia solo es dada. If you don't leave the family. Si tú, no te, si tú no te apartas de la familia. Hey, let me say that again. Hey, esperen, déjeme decir esto una vez más. An inheritance is only given if you don't leave the family. Una herencia solo es dada si tú no te alejas de la familia. That's a pretty deep thought. Eso es un pensamiento profundo. Okay, so... Now we look at verse 13 and 14 again. Ahora vemos el, ahora vamos a leer el versículo 3 y 14 una vez más. Furthermore, you heard the message of the truth, the good news offering you deliverance and put your trust in the Messiah. We're sealed by him with the promise Ruach HaKodesh, who guarantees you our inheritance until we come into possession of it and thus bring him praise commensurate with his glory. Okay, so you're sealed by the Ruach HaKodesh. Entonces tú eres sellado por el Ruach HaKodesh o el Espíritu Santo. The lawyer's job is to offer you advice. El trabajo del abogado es ofrecerte un, un aviso o, o, o dejarte saber la, la situación. So you can... Para que tú puedas... You cannot listen to that advice. Eh, tú no puedes escuchar ese, ese aviso, lo que te están queriendo dejar saber. Thus, lose your inheritance. Eh, esto hace que tú pierdes, eh, para, no, para que no pierdas tu herencia. So, so, it's a promise. Es una promesa. But it's not a guarantee. Pero no es una garantía. Because you have a choice. Porque tú tienes una decisión. That's why when Yeshua said, what did you do with my talent? Eh, porque tú tienes una opción y, y, y por eso es que dice cuando Yeshua dijo, ¿qué has hecho con mi talento? We talked about it in the marriage ministry this past week. Esta semana que pasó, hemos estado, eh, hablamos de esto en, en, el, en el ministerio ministry. de matrimonio. What if you don't take care of your husband or wife? ¿Qué tal si tú no te no 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 hace no cuidas a tu esposo o a tu esposa? They're going to fade away and die. Ellos se van a a a desvanecer y se van a a, a morir. And we were encouraging the couples to become the best servant they can be in the marriage. Y le estamos eh, 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 Dice de, de animándole a los a las parejas que traten de ser los mejores sirvientes uno para el otro. So it, it's the understanding of those who are faithful with little will be faithful with a lot. Es el entendimiento de eh, al que poco se le da se le pondrá en mucho. Did you ever think about this? 
¿Será que alguna vez has pensado sobre esto? Why is modern Israel so small? ¿Por qué es que Israel es tan pequeña? Compared to what biblical Israel was. Eh, comparándolo con el Israel, eh, de, de, de la, el antiguo Israel, el, el, el Israel bíblico. Well, God was seeing if they were going to be faithful with a little bit. Bueno, y Jehová se dio cuenta que ellos simplemente iban a ser eh, fieles con, un, con lo poco. Now, why am I saying all this? Ahora, ¿por qué estoy diciendo yo todo esto? You need to have this type of thought process in verse 13 and 14. Tú necesitas tener este tipo de pensamiento, de proceso de pensamiento en el versículo eh, 3 y 14. If you heard the message of truth, si tú escuchaste el mensaje de la verdad, but don't apply the message of truth, pero no aplicas el mensaje de la verdad, then you're being, being given a little bit, but you're not going to be given a lot. Eh, se te dará un poco, mas no se te dará en abundancia. And you're going to lose the little bit that you have. Y vas a perder lo poco que tienes. Because your trust in Messiah Porque tu confianza en el Mesías will be stolen by Satan if you don't practice what you preach. Va a ser robada por, el, por Satanás eh, porque si tú no haces y no tomas acción en lo que tú predicas. A seal can be broken. Un sello puede ser eh, roto. Now, why do I say that? Ahora, ¿por qué digo yo esto? Because you're being de delivered from sin. Porque tú fuiste puesto en libertad del pecado. Unless you replace that, that sin with something. Al menos que tú reemplaces ese pecado con algo. That void is going to get filled by Satan. Este baúl va a ser llenado por Satanás. So here in verse 13, Aquí en el 13, most people don't understand what the job of the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, is. La mayoría de las personas no entienden cuál es el, 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 el trabajo del el Padre, el Hijo y el Ruach HaKodesh. Because you need to understand what the job of the Ruach is. Tú necesitas entender eh, y, o entender cuál es el trabajo del Ruach HaKodesh. Because he's a trusted officer of the court. Porque él es un oficial que eh, se le confía, un oficial de la ley que se le confía. Because the, the, the lawyer takes an oath of their office. Porque el abogado toma un voto de esa oficina. That they're going to be telling the truth or guiding their client in the truth. Porque ellos eh, van a, a hablarle al, al cliente y, y de que diga la verdad o se les va a guiar a que digan la verdad. The lawyer can also become a prosecutor. Un abogado también puede ser un, uh, uh, un fiscal. And the, can go against you. Y él también puede ir en contra tuya. So the lawyer will guarantee your inheritance until you come in possession of it. Entonces un abogado va a garantizar tu herencia hasta que tú tomes posesión de ella. If you're following the message of truth, si tú estás siguiendo el mensaje de la verdad. If you're leaving your, the sin that you were in. Si tú dejas el pecado en el cual tú vives. If you trust in the Messiah si and tú, follow him. Si tú confías en el Mesías y lo sigues. If you then listen to the rock and what, they're, what he's guiding you in. Y si tú escuchas al, al, al Ruach y confías en lo, hacia donde él te está guiando. He will guarantee your inheritance. Él va a garantizar tu herencia. Until you come into possession of it. Hasta que tú tomes posesión de ella. Do you think the Father wants... Because let's read verse 14 now. Vamos a leer el versículo 14. Who guarantees our inheritance until we come into possession of it, and thus bring him praise commensurate with, it, with his glory. Do you think God wants Harry Potter praising him with witchcraft spells? ¿Ustedes piensan que eh, el Padre quiere que Harry Potter eh, lo adore a él con su con su magia o con su brujería Look at verse 14 Veamos el versículo 14 Who guarantees our inheritance until we come into possession it, of it and thus bring him praise commensurate with his glory 
If you're not following the 613 commandments, si tú no estás siguiendo los 613 mandamientos, or the ones that pertain to you, o los, o, 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 o los que te pertenecen a ti, are you going to bring Elohim praise commensurate with their glory? Eh, o tú vas a llevarle a Elohim eh, alabanzas de acuerdo a su gloria. Let's put it simply. Vamos a ponerlo simple. Is God going to say, yeah, that's my, I'm so proud of my son. He wears dresses. Eh, o será que Jehová, vamos a ponerlo de esta manera. Será que Jehová, el padre, dirá, oh, sí, yo estoy tan orgulloso de mi hijo varón porque se pone vestidos. I'm so, have, I'm so blessed my son's an alcoholic. Oh, yo estoy, yo soy tan bendecido de que mi hijo sea un alcohólico. I'm so blessed my son does LSD. Yo estoy, eh, estoy tan bendecido que mi hijo está haciendo... I heard la... the Beatles today. Oh. <laughs> Va a ser la droga esa que eh, LSD. You know, Lucy oh. in the sky with diamonds. Oh. You don't have to translate it. Yeah. Because it doesn't translate in Spanish. Because it's not the... Uh, you know, Lucy, Sky, Diamonds. I don't think Lucy is L in Spanish. N N Lucy. Yeah. No. Sky the is not L L C no, a S. Yeah, this doesn't go together. Diamonds. Say cielo, what is Diamonds is in Spanish? Diamonds, Diamantes. Okay, we got the D. Yeah, Diamantes. <laughs> okay. So, it's... That type of person going to bring glory to God? ¿Será que ese tipo de persona va a llevar eh, gloria a Jehová? A no. Dios? But no. They, they could believe in, you know, Jesus. Well, ellos pueden creer en, en, Jesus, en Jesús. Satan believes in him. Eh, Satanás cree en él. But he doesn't want to follow Yeshua's truth. Pero él no quiere seguir la verdad de Yeshua. You see why we're spending so much time and why Bible study is so needed? Eh, ¿Te das cuenta por qué eh, pasamos bastante tiempo en los estudios y por qué el estudio bíblico es necesario? Because, you know, Satan might not want us on YouTube until later when we upload it. Eh, tal vez eh, Satanás no nos, quieras, eh, no nos quiera a nosotros en YouTube, pero luego lo vamos a subir de toda manera. That's why you're not seeing it live on YouTube, because for some reason, we're not there. Eh, por, por eso es que ustedes no nos están viendo en vivo en YouTube y no estamos allí por alguna razón. Don't worry. No se preocupen. We're going to figure a way out. Vamos a buscarle una vuelta al asunto. All right. Anybody got any questions on this? Yes, sir. You're talking about verse 13? 14. Guarantees our inheritance and a view of redemption? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, let me just, we got more people Skyping in. One second, let me uh, just send a link. Yeah, it's a view of redemption is understanding that you've been redeemed. El, el, la palabra redención. Eh, understanding redemption. El entender la redención. Is understanding that you've been redeemed. Es el entender que tú fuiste redimido. And that you should not do your sin anymore. Y que tú no deberías pecar ya. Ya no deberías pecar más. You know. Because then you just have to be redeemed each day. Porque entonces vas a tener que ser redimido cada día. And that means you're not following the truth. Entonces eso significa que no estás siguiendo la verdad. 
And that goes to the understanding of John chapter 8, Yochanan chapter 8. Y esto se basa en el entendimiento en el, de eh, Juan capítulo 8. 8. And where Yeshua said to the woman who was caught in adultery. Donde Yeshua le dijo a la mujer que fue uh, sorprendida en adulterio. Don't go sin anymore. Le dijo, vete y no peques más. But the only reason he didn't, he didn't allow her to be stoned. Pero la única razón por la cual él no permitió que ella se le apedrease. Was not because he was showing her grace as they were not following the rules. Eh, no es porque él estaba mostrando a ella gracia, eh, es porque ellos, eh, porque ellos no estaban siguiendo las leyes. She was caught in adultery. Eh, yo, ella fue eh, sorprendida en adulterio. But you can't just stone her, you need the guy. Porque tú solamente no puedes eh, apedrearla a ella, más también necesitas al hombre. Okay, so they were trying to play a game. Ellos estaban tratando de hacer un juego ahí. Any questions or comments? Alguna pregunta o comentarios? Yes. Can you actually say that he showed mercy to her because he saw the, 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 the actual repentance of her and at the same time put the other people on his place when, when, by telling them, the, you know? No, he was not. He was, she would have been stoned to death because she was caught in adultery. Ella te, de, de, debió ser puesta a muerte eh, por haber sido apedreada eh, porque fue eh, sorprendida en adulterio. That means she was active in the act. Esto significa que ella estaba activa en el acto. That means she was not being raped. Esto significa de que ella no estaba siendo violada. But the law of God says. Pero la ley de Jehová dice. That if somebody is caught in adultery, you have to stone both of them, the man and the woman. La ley de Jehová, la palabra de Jehová eh, dice de que si eh, um, sorprendes a alguien en adulterio, a, a un hombre a la y a la mujer, ellos ambos deben ser puestos a muerte. Because if she was having sex alone, that's called something else. Porque si ella fue eh, sorprendida teniendo sexo sola, esto ya se, se llamaría, tendría otro nombre. It's not called adultery. Y esto no es, eh, no es adulterio. Ok, so the reason they didn't stone her to death was they didn't bring the man who she was caught with. Eh, la razón por que ella no fue apedreada es porque no trajeron al hombre en el, con el cual ella fue sorprendida en el acto. So, the next time she got caught, she would, might not be so fortunate. Eh, pues la próxima vez que ella sea sorprendida, tal vez ella no, ella no sea tan afortunada. Because the message of truth is this. Porque el mensaje de la verdad es And este. I do, I do believe that we should still follow this to this day. Yo realmente creo que debemos de seguir este, esto hasta el día de hoy. That anybody caught in adultery should be stoned to death. Que cualquiera que fuese sorprendido en adulterio debe ser puesto a muerte. And now why do I believe that? Ahora, ¿por qué creo yo esto? Because the father said you'll stop this type of behavior in your community. Porque el padre dice entonces así vas a, a, a terminar con este tipo de, de um, behavior. Um, de comportamiento en el, en el campamento. So the message of truth is this. Entonces el mensaje, es, el mensaje de la verdad es este. Leave your sin. Deja tu pecado. Be delivered from it. Eh, se, se puesto en libertad de él. And don't go sin anymore. Y vete y no peques más. Put your trust in Yeshua. Pon tu confianza en Yeshua. Did he sin? ¿Será que él pecó? No. No. So follow him. Entonces síguelo a él. Ok. Follow the Ruach HaKodesh. Sigue al Ruach HaKodesh. He's going to remind you of all the laws that are important to you. Él te va a hacer recordar todas las leyes que son importantes para ti. Okay. Any other questions on this part? ¿Alguna otra pregunta hasta esta parte? Yellow sweater woman? No? No questions or comments? You know, it... it Talking about the, the thing of the lady, but I know it's regarding the truth. I don't want to get out of it, but we're debating like with um, David. It, she was raped, or was she just, or she just commit adultery with him, or she didn't say anything? Well, the Torah says. Bueno, la Torah dice that if you're being raped and you don't cry out, 
it's your fault. La Torah dice que si tú eh, estás siendo violada y tú no gritas o no, no lloras en ese momento, eh, entonces no, no, tú no estás siendo violada. So did Bathsheba cry out? ¿Será que Bathsheba, ella lloró, ella gritó en ese momento? And nobody answered her? Y nadie le, le, le contestó, la escuchó. I must have missed that. Será que yo tal vez me perdí de eso. That's, that was my thought because she never said anything. It was like I guess then she liked it mm -hmm. because she the part is like yes yeah, she knew when David called her called her his people to go get her immediately. As she stayed there. She knew her husband was dead. No, her husband wasn't dead when she. Well, at that moment he wasn't dead, but after that. Even after that, she didn't say anything. She didn't cry out by knowing that her husband was dead. Now, and she was with, da with, da with King David. It's like, she, yeah, she liked it since the beginning. The Torah is very specific. La Torah es muy específica. About God will hear if you cry out. Dios escuchará si una, si una mujer está siendo violada. And if then whole 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 He'll forgive you if you cry out. Y él te perdonará si tú lloras ante él o pidiendo ayuda. But if you don't cry out, like if you're held at gunpoint or a knife point. Eh, si tú estás eh, estás sometido, que, que te tienes sometido con un cuchillo o con una pistola. And the bad guy says, "Don't cry out, or I'll kill you." Y el um, y el mal el, 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 el malo en este caso eh, te dice no llores o te mato it would be better to be dead and be with God esto sería mejor estar muerto y estar con Dios but most men who rape women are cowards anyway pero la mayoría de los hombres que, que violan a una mujer son cobardes and ladies if you have to grab his families and twist and you'll get away Damas, este, si ustedes deben hacer eso, si pasan por esa situación, uh, tomen al, al hombre por sus genitales y tuérzanlos y él los, las va a dejar tranquila. Grab them and rip them. O, Make him a eunuch and en, he won't do that again. Entonces, o si no, tal vez uh, agárrenlo por su, sus genitales y córtenselos y lo, así lo harán eunuco. But the Torah is very specific about these type of behaviors. Pero la Torah es muy específica en cuanto a estos um, behavior, behaviors, actions, actos, ¿Ah? acciones de comportamiento. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so then we're bunny trailing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. We. I didn't want. No to problem. Sorry. Go ahead. Did she cry out? No, she didn't cry out Absalom and his sister. But she never had, had relations again and never had children, never got married. So is that why Absalom died? Absalom died for many reasons. Well, one of them, he was a selfish piece of garbage. And he wanted to kill his father. That's generally not... I think that's breaking the fifth commandment. Wanting to kill your dad. Yeah, but... You know, breaking the fifth commandment, the one that God spoke on Shavuot, I think that's one of the top ones you might not want to do. Eh, yo creo que el quebrantar el, el mandamiento que el Jehová habló en Shavuot, el quinto mandamiento, creo que esto es uno de los mandamientos que tú no quieras quebrantar. Okay, now let's go on to the next slide. I know we spent a, a lot of time on this, but I wanted to build. Eh, vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Sé que hemos pasado tiempo, pero quería yo construir una, una base. Now let's look at verse 13 again. Vamos a leer versículo 13 una vez más. And we're focusing on the word truth. Y nos estamos enfocando en la palabra verdad. Because this is very important. Porque esto es muy importante. Furthermore, you heard the message of the truth, the good news offered Offering you deliverance and putting your trust in the Messiah, we're sealed by him with the promise of Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, now the word truth is G225. La palabra verdad es la, eh, la palabra G225. Okay, uh, 
Definition number one is uh, according to truth. La definición número uno es de acuerdo a la verdad. And definition number two is our most important part. Y la definición número dos es nuestra parte más importante. What is true in things appertaining to God and the duties of man, moral and religious truth. Lo que es verdad y las cosas que le pertenecen a Dios y el, el duties, el trabajo, Job. el trabajo del hombre y en, sus, en lo moral y, lo, y en la verdad religiosa. Okay, so what are your duties pertaining to God? ¿Cuáles son tus trabajos de per, de perteneciendo a Dios? So now this gives a whole other level of what he's writing in verse 13. Ahora esto, esto da un entendimiento completo, un, un, un nivel diferente, completamente diferente en cuanto a, a lo que él se está refiriendo. What's a man's job? What's a woman's job? ¿Cuál es el trabajo del hombre? ¿Cuál es el trabajo de la mujer? What's all of our jobs? ¿Cuál es el trabajo de todos nosotros? We're supposed to be counting the Omar. Debemos estar contando el Omer. So that we will be on the right day for Shavuot. Para que así estemos en el día correcto para el Shavuot. What's each home's job coming the, the, this, this Shavuot? ¿Cuál es el trabajo de cada familia eh, eh, de, eh, para este Shavuot? Every home must bring two loaves of bread. Cada, cada casa debe de traer dos, dos panes. Okay. What are your duties to God? ¿Cuál es tu trabajo en Jehová? All right, so remember, the Brit Hadashah, the New Testament, is not written. Recuerden que el Nuevo Testamento, o el Brit Hadashah, aún no estaba escrito. Okay, so putting your trust in Messiah. Entonces, poner tu confianza en el Mesías. Because the message of truth is that you have to leave sin. Porque el mensaje de la verdad es que tú debes de apartarte del pecado. That you can no longer be an adulterer. Que ya tú no puedes ser un adúltero. You can no longer be a homosexual. Ya tú no puedes ser un homosexual. You can no longer have mental disorders. Ya tú no puedes tener eh, eh, des, un desorden mental. You have to follow God and kick the demons out of your brain. Eh, tú debes de seguir a Jehová y patear fuera de tu, de tu eh, cerebro a los demonios. Okay, because there's only two sexes, man and woman. Very Por, clear. Porque es muy claro, hay simplemente dos sexos, un varón y una mujer. According, o una mujer. God made male and female. Dios creó al masculino y al y a lo femenino. So you have to figure out what your jobs are pertaining eh, to that. De perte, perteneciendo a eso, tú debes de entender cuál es tu trabajo. All right, let's go back to verse 13 again. Vamos a regreso al versículo 13 una vez más. Furthermore, you you who heard the message of the truth, the good news of offering you deliverance, and put your trust in the Messiah. We're sealed by him with the promise Ruach HaKodesh. Okay, so here in the CJB it says deliverance. In some translations it says salvation. Eh, aquí en la Biblia completa de Judía dice eh, puesto en libertad, eh, libertad, eh, puesto, sí, puesto en libertad y en otras traducciones dicen salvación. Okay. So let's take a look at this definition because it's very important. Vamos a echarle un vistazo a esta definición porque es muy importante. Okay. It's deliverance, or in some translations, salvation. It's G4991 in the Greek. Es la palabra salvación o libertad. Y es la palabra G4991 en el griego. It means deliverance from perversion. Número uno, definición número uno, es puesto en libertad de la perversión. Safety. Eh, seguridad. Okay, definition number two. Definición número dos. Deliverance from molestation of enemies. Eh, ser puesto en libertad de, de los enemigos que te molestan. So, why would anybody want to go back and Por, say we're not under the law? ¿Por qué querían muchas personas regresarse y decir que ya no, no, no debemos hacer la ley. Why do you want to go back to serving the enemies? ¿Por qué quieras tú eh, vol volverte de regreso y servir a tus enemigos? Right? ¿Verdad? So, you heard the message of truth. Tú escuchaste el mensaje de la verdad. Your job pertaining to the Father. Tu trabajo perteneciendo al Padre. You've now been delivered 
from your enemies. Ahora fuiste, ahora fuiste puesto en libertad de tu enemigo. Why do you want to go back and go party with them? Ahora, ¿por qué quieras tú ir de regreso y, y, y hacer fiestas con eso? This is what Shaul is telling us. De esto es lo que Pablo nos está hablando. Now you need this because when you get to chapter 2, uh, no, tú necesitas esta información porque cuando lleguemos al capítulo número 2, it starts to talk about Jew and Gentile together in Messiah. Empieza hablando de un judío y un gentil juntos en el Mesías. So if you think that the Gentiles don't have to follow the law, Ahora, si tú piensas que los gentiles no deben de seguir la ley, Then you don't understand what you've been delivered from. Entonces tú no vas a entender de qué fue de qué fue este puesto en libertad. Asher, you've been delivered from your clothes. <laughs> Asher. What? All right. So you need this deep understanding. Tú necesitas este entendimiento profundo As you go through the rest of the chapters of Ephesians. Mientras que tú sigues en los capítulos eh, más adelante en, a través de Efesios. And any teacher, pastor, or rabbi who says that everybody doesn't have to follow the law. Cualquier rabino, maestro, o, o pastor de una iglesia, o un líder que dice que ya no tengamos que seguir la ley. Can't even understand the most simplest of definitions. No van a poder entender ni siquiera una de las definiciones más simples. Truth means what your job is to God. Tu, la verdad significa cuál es tu trabajo en Jehová. So what is your job to God? Cuál es tu trabajo en Jehová. To have the best Christmas display in, in my whole neighborhood. El tener el, 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 la decoración de, de Navidad la más grande que pueda haber en todo el barrio. To hide the Easter eggs so well that nobody can find them. Esconder el huevo de 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 la Pascua eh, o de, de donde nadie puede encontrarlo. To have the best ham eating choir in the whole planet. Tener el coro que 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 come mucho jamón en, en todo el planeta. To wear my flactory so big that nobody can miss them. Eh, el, el ponerme las filaterías tan grande de que nadie se pueda eh, 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 pasar por alto. To daven so much that people think I got a problem with my back. <laughs> el mecerme eh, mientras hago la oración eh, para que, y que las personas piensen que tengo algún problema con mi espalda. Is that going to give glory to God? Será que esto le dará gloria a Jehová? Glory to God would be obedience. To his commandments. Gloria a Jehová sería la obediencia a sus mandamientos. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Verse 14. Versículo 14. Need some coffee? There's coffee over there. I got, I got, later I'm going to be in. Well, right now you're falling asleep. Yeah. Who guarantees our inheritance until we come into possession of it? And thus bring him praise commensurate with his glory. Okay, so in verse 14. Entonces en el versículo 14. Before moving on to section number 6. Antes de seguir a la sección, a la sección número 6. We need to understand what the job of the Holy Spirit is the Ruach HaKodesh. Necesitamos entender cuál es el trabajo del Ruach HaKodesh o del, o del Espíritu Santo. It is, a, he reminds us es eh, eh, para recordarnos a nosotros of the laws you need to do eh, de las leyes que nosotros tenemos que hacer so that you can get your inheritance in heaven para que así tú puedas tener tu herencia en el cielo but you might lose your inheritance here más tal vez puedas tú perder tu herencia aquí en la tierra like I did como yo my sons got their inheritance and my sister cut me out mis hijos, a mis hijos le dieron su herencia y mi hermana me, cort, me sacó a mí de la herencia. But, you know what? I'm going to have a nice view of the streets of gold. Pero ¿saben qué? Yo voy a tener un vistazo hermoso de las calles de oro. And my sister's going to have a nice view of Satan's butt. Y mi hermana va a tener un vistazo muy hermoso de las, del trasero de Satanás. And I have children. Y yo tengo hijos. She has none. Ella no tiene hijos. I have grandchildren. Yo tengo nietos. She has none. Ella no tiene nietos. I've been married for 31 years. 
Eh, yo he estado casado por 31 años. She got married last year at almost 60. Y ella se casó el año pasado casi con 60 años. You can get your inheritance here, you can get your inheritance there. Se It's your puede, choice. Se te puede dar tu herencia aquí o se te puede dar tu herencia en el cielo. Es tu decisión. You need to switch batteries? Yep, it's blinking. Don't worry, we're not live. Well, we are on Periscope. No estamos en vivo, pero sí estamos en Periscope. We are streaming on Periscope. I should check. The, can you check the Periscope screen? I'll let you use your phone. It's Bible study night. I, do you, tell me you got to go to the car. He's walking that way. Did you leave it in the car? No, his phone. Is that on two on two? Right. Anyway, so those of you can you want to see us go to Periscope. Y a aquellos que nos quieran ver pueden irse a Periscope. And we're going to start doing some other streams too. I know y, there's other gaming sites we could stream on. Eh, y vamos a estar usando right. otros medios también eh, que podamos eh, eh, publicar eh, eh, esta eh, este estudio bíblico. Okay. So I got to ask a millennial what other gaming sites we can stream on. <laughs> But it's over there. We have it in the system. It tells us which one. In, uh, um, uh, anyway. All right. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. All right. Let's go to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Woo! We're going on to section number six. We're going to finish chapter one tonight. Vamos a terminar el capítulo uno en esta noche. Any questions before we move on? ¿Alguna pregunta antes de que avancemos? Any other questions? The rookie over there? Um, no, I was just looking at U14. And... What's what? You were looking at what? At U14 right there. Reminds us of the, what you can and can't do. All right, let's go on to verse 15 through 17. Vamos a leer el versículo 15 al 17. We're starting section number 6. Estamos comenzando la sección número 6. It is verse 15 through 17. Que es del versículo 15 hasta el 17. It is entitled, In my prayers I keep asking the God of our Lord, Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you a... Es para... It's verse 16, basically. Oh, prácticamente. El, ok. I have, well, eh, giving thanks, ok. Ok. Eh, esto se titula Dando las gracias, eh, eh, ay, dando las gracias por ti en mis oraciones y pidiéndole a Dios, nuestro, eh, todo eh, nuestro Señor, Yeshua, el Mesías, el, el, y el glori, del glorioso Padre, que nos dé el espíritu y sabiduría y la revelación para que así tú puedas tener un conocimiento completo de él. Okay. Let's read verse 15 through 17. Vamos a leer el versículo 15 al 17. For this reason, ever since I heard about your trust in the Lord Yeshua, your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you in my prayers. I keep asking. The God, we're not on Periscope? No Periscope either? No, Facebook, you, the two, sorry about that one second. We're not on Periscope. No. I will check it later, it's nine, almost nine o'clock. Oh, go live later. Now I've got me and my own mind thinking. Now, let's stay with the study. 15 through 17. The, for this reason, ever since I heard about your trust in the Lord, Yeshua, the love, and the love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. In my prayers, I keep asking the God of our Lord, Yeshua, the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will have full knowledge of Him. Amen? Amen. So in verse 15, entonces en el versículo 15, he's giving thanks for the salvation of sinners. Él está dando las gracias por la salvación de los pecadores. Because you know when somebody comes to know the Lord, you got to give thanks. Eh, porque aquellos que son nuevos en el Señor, ellos hay que dar hay que dar gracias por eso. But we need to look at verse 
17. Pero necesitamos eh, ver el versículo 17. And who Shaul, Paul, is praying to. Y a quién es que Shaul o Pablo le está eh, orando, le está, eh, eh, sí, está orando a él. The God of our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you can have full knowledge of him. Who is he praying to? A quién es que él está orando? He's praying to the Father. Él está orando al Padre. Shaul is not praying to Yeshua. Eh, Pablo no le está orando a Yeshua. He's giving praise to the glorious Father. Él está dando adoración y a, a, al, glorio, al Padre glorioso. Because he says the, fa, the, the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah. Porque dice el Padre de nuestro Yeshua el Mesías. So this is going to crush a lot of Christians. Pero esto va a aplastar a muchos cristianos. Who think that the Father and the Son are actually the same person. Que piensan que el Padre y el Hijo son la misma, la, la misma persona. Anybody ever heard that before? Oh, this morning. My mom said it. Yeah, your mom said it. <laughs> yeah, they, they heard my, my stepfather. They talk about that all the time. I'm like, well, right you right. might want to read them verse 17. I just uh, said, that's why I'm saying I'm going to put this in thing and send it to them. It's <laughs> like. <laughs> He's praying to the God of of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father. Él está orando al Padre de nuestro Señor Yeshua el Mesías. Okay. It's very important. Es muy importante. Now, this is another important part. Esto es una parte importante también. Hold your place in Ephesians 1. Mantenga su lugar ahí en Efesios capítulo 1. And turn to Proverbs, Mishal 28, verse 9. Y abran sus Biblias en Proverbios, capítulo 29. 28. 28. 28, 19. 28, verse 9. Capítulo 28, versículo 9. Proverbs 28, verse 9. Proverbios, capítulo 28, versículo 9. If he's praying, if Shaul is praying to the Father... Si Pablo le está orando al Padre, what is the only way the Father would hear a prayer? ¿Cuál es la única manera que el Padre va a escuchar una oración? No. He'll hear your prayer if, let's read it. If a person will not listen to Torah, even his prayer is an abomination. Si Now, does the Bible lie? ¿Será que la Biblia miente? Is there anything incorrect in the, the entire scripture? ¿Será que hay algo incorrecto en todas las escrituras? Proverbs 28 verse 9 again says. Una vez más, Proverbios capítulo 28 versículo 9 dice. If a person will not listen to the to Torah, even his prayers an abomination. So Shaul could not be preaching against following the commandments Entonces Pablo no pudo haber estado predicando en contra de seguir los mandamientos If he wanted his prayer to be heard Si él quería que sus eh, oraciones fuesen eh, eh, respondida so, o escuchada A person who's in an adulterous affair eh, una persona que está en una a relación a, a de adulterio The Lord's not going to hear the prayer Jehová, el Padre, no le va a escuchar sus oraciones. Right, King David? ¿Verdad, el Rey David? I don't think he heard. No, he didn't because the baby died. Mm -hmm. And he laid there on the ground for a bunch of days, right? You don't think uh, Bathsheba wasn't praying also? Yeah, I guess he was. But she didn't cry out, so she was in an adulterous affair. Puts a whole other understanding on the book of Ephesians now, doesn't it? Ahora esto pone un entendimiento completamente diferente el, al libro de los Efesios. And Galatians that we spent 14 weeks on. Y el libro de Gálatas, el cual duramos 14 semanas ahí. So, hold your place there in Proverbs 28, verse 9. We might go back to it. 
Mantengan sus lugares allí en el Proverbios capítulo 28, versículo 9. Y tal vez regresaremos. Go back to Ephesians 1. Ahora vamos de regreso a Efesios capítulo 1. Let's read verse 15 through 17. Vamos a leer el versículo 15 al 17. For this reason, ever since I heard about your trust in the Lord Yeshua and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you in my prayers. I keep asking the God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will have full knowledge of him. So, who's he asking to give wisdom to the Messianic congregation at Ephesus? ¿A quién se, será que él está eh, 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 preguntando, pidiendo que le dé sabiduría a, a la iglesia en Éfeso? Uh, he's asking the Father, not Yeshua. Él está preguntando al Padre, no a Yeshua. It's quite an interesting understanding now. Ahora esto es un entendimiento muy importante, ¿verdad? You understand why I'm taking five weeks to go through one chapter? Si ahora están entendiendo por qué yo me tomo cinco semanas para, para eh, terminar un capítulo. Ten or twelve hours worth of study on one chapter. Diez o doce horas eh, de, de, de tiempo en pasado, tiempo pasado eh, en haber eh, construido puesto este capítulo. Now remember, Shaul's, Shaul's not reading the Gospels. Recuérdense que Pablo no está leyendo la, los Evangelios. What is read in the synagogue every single Shabbat? ¿Qué es lo que se estaba leyendo cada sábado en, en, en las sinagogas? The Torah. Era la Torá. So they must still be following the Torah. Entonces esto, esto significa que aún ellos estaban siguiendo la Torá. Because King Solomon wrote Proverbs 28 verse 9. Porque fue el rey Salomón quien escribió Proverbios capítulo 28 versículo 9. He's very clear that if you don't follow the Torah. Él fue muy claro que si tú no seguías la Torá. Your prayer is an abomination. Tu oración es una abominación. So here he Shaul must be following entonces, a, entonces aquí vemos que Pablo es, eh, debe estar siguiendo la Torá. What do you think about that, Marty? Did you ever preach that when you were one of those seventh day preachers? You wake me up. Yeah, I know I did. <laughs> well, we, we had the message almost like that now because we never believe in that as uh, that Yeshua was God, you know, so it was or more oriented towards that, you know, the God is the Father and Yeshua is the Messiah, but, um, but we didn't go that deep on the, uh, some of the words, because uh, the Gospel in, in verse 15 and 16 is it's the Torah, you know, but the full Torah, not only part of it, that we You know, we didn't have the other part. We, we, didn't have the, we, did, we could not understand the other part of the Torah. You know, that's, that's bad. Because we only, we say, oh, yes, we are keeping the, the, the law, but we just, in our, in our head was the Ten Commandments, not the rest of the Torah, so which, you know, Russia was very Torah-oriented. So, he changed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you for waking you up. Okay. Very good there. All right. So, now let's move on to the next slide. Vamos a seguir a la siguiente diapositiva. Any questions or comments? Alguna pregunta o comentarios? to the Father, but in your prayer, you mentioned His Son. Okay. Through, through the Messiah. Mm -hmm. I pray to Him through the Messiah. Yes. So is that correct? That's, that's okay. You come to the Father in the name of Yeshua the Son. Tú vas y oras al Padre en el nombre de Yeshua el Mesías. 
But the scary part is Proverbs 28, verse 9. Pero la parte de, que da miedo es el versículo 9 del capítulo 28 de Proverbios. You're going to the Father through Yeshua. Tú vas al Padre a través de Yeshua. And if you're not following Torah, your prayer is an abomination. Entonces, y si tú no estás siguiendo la Torah, tus oraciones son una abominación. It's a hard understanding. Es, es, es duro entenderlo esto. But that's why we're sitting at the edge of the abyss in the world. Por eso es que estamos sentados en la en, en el borde del abismo en el mundo. The wheat's gone. El trigo ya no está se ha ido. The corn is gone. El también el maíz ya no hay maíz. And now there's an Ebola pig virus going around the globe. Y ahora hay un ébola que es, viene, proviene del puerco, del cerdo, tra, en, la, en todo el mundo. And uh, Yeshua said, when the fourth seal gets open, war, famine, and plague. Y Yeshua dice que cuando el, el cuarto sello sea abierto, va a ser hambruna, plagas, y guerra. So, we're going to have a famine. Vamos a tener hambruna. We're, gonna have, we're having a plague of animals. Estamos teniendo una plaga de animales. Which will be a plague of also humans. Que también será, pasará a ser una plaga de, de humanos. Which will then turn into war. Que esto luego se va a tornar en una guerra. Because people will fight over food. Porque las personas van a pelearse por el, por el alimento. They, they said that by the end of the summer, pork prices will rise 70%. Ellos dicen que para final de, del, um, del verano el, el, la carne de cerdo va a aumentar a aproximadamente un 70%. So if they're not eating pork, they're going to have to eat something else which we eat. Entonces si ellos no van a, a eh, no van a estar comiendo puerco, ellos van a tener que comer otras cosas. Que And that means comemos. a day's wages for a loaf of bread. Y esto significa un día pago por un, por un pan. Are you getting why we need to follow God? ¿Están entendiendo por qué, por qué debemos de seguir a Jehová? Yes, sir. You have to follow Torah for the Lord to answer your prayer. Tú necesitas seguir la Torah para que Jehová pueda eh, responder tus oraciones. And that's why this letter is after, after the Galatians letter. Y por eso es que esta carta sigue después de la carta a, a los Gálatas. Yes, sir. Yeah, the Lord will answer back if you're being obedient. Jehová te va a responder si tú eres obediente. That's why, as we finish this chapter tonight, por eso es que mientras eh, estamos terminando este capítulo esta noche, as we do, we begin chapter two next week, y comencemos el capítulo número dos la próxima semana, I mean, uh, and I want everybody to go read chapter two for next week, y yo quiero que todos vayan y lean el capítulo dos, el capítulo dos para la siguiente semana, your eyes are going to be truly opened, 
tus ojos van a ser verdaderamente abiertos. Because it's going to read now very different. Porque ahora vas a poder leerlo de una manera diferente. Now let's look at verse 15 through 17 again. Vamos a leer versículo 17, eh, 15 al 17 una vez más. For this reason, ever since I heard about your trust in the Lord, Yeshua, and your love for all God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks for you. In my prayers, I keep asking the God of the Lord, of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father, to give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you will have the full knowledge of him. Okay? So he's praying to the Father. Entonces, él está orando al Padre. What would be the spirit of wisdom and revelation that he's asking for? ¿Cuál sería el espíritu de, de la sabiduría y la revelación al que en él está orando? Understanding what Yeshua came to do. Eh, entendiendo a qué, a qué vino Yeshua a, a, a hacer. What is the spirit of wisdom? ¿Cuál es el espíritu de la sabiduría? Knowing what the Father wants. El conocer qué es lo, la voluntad del Padre. Okay. And following the Elohim in spirit and and in truth. Y seguir a Elohim en espíritu y en verdad. Because if you gain knowledge of Elohim, porque si obtienes el conocimiento de Elohim, you're going to know how to please them. Vas a, a conocer cómo uh, eh, um, please, satisfacerlo a ellos. Then when nobody has food, he can still rain down manna from heaven. Y para cuando ya no haya comida, él aún así puede hacer llover el maná del cielo. And he'll bless those who are obedient. Y él va a bendecir a aquellos que son obedientes. Because the Lord desires obedience over sacrifice. Porque el Señor eh, prefiere el obediencia eh, en vez de eh, sacrificios. Now most people don't understand that statement. Pero la mayoría de las personas no entienden esto. The Lord would prefer that you didn't have to make a sacrifice because sacrifices are generally about sin. El Señor pre prefiere que tú no hagas un sacrificio porque por lo general un sacrificio se trata, casi siempre un sacrificio se trata de, de por el pecado. Ok. Uh, how would one gain the full knowledge of him? Look at verse 17. Eh, veamos el versículo 17. ¿Qué fue lo que una persona ganó en conocimiento? Let's look at verse 17. Vamos a ver el versículo 17. The God of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, the glorious Father. To give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you would have full knowledge of him. How would one gain full knowledge of the Lord? ¿Cómo es esto que alguien obtendrá el conocimiento completo, el conocimiento total de Jehová? Six, one, three. Seis, uno, tres. 613 laws of God. Las 613 leyes de Dios. Found in the Torah. Esta la podemos encontrar en la Torah. And the Torah consists of the first five books of the, our Bible. Y la Torah consiste de los primeros cinco libros de nuestra Biblia. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, eh, Leviticus, Números, y Deuteronomio. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Last section, section number seven. La, la, la última sección, sección número siete. Oh no, we got section eight. I got to pick up the pace here. All right, section number seven. Sección número siete. Is verse 18 through 21. Es el versículo 18 hasta el 21. I pray that he will give you light, give light to your eyes, of your heart, so that you will understand the hope to which he has called you, which rich glories there are in the inheritance he has promised his people. Now, surpassingly great is his power working in us who trust him. It works with the same mighty strength he used when he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead and seat him at the right hand in heaven. Far above every ruler, authority, power, dominion, any other name that can be named either in the Alam Hazet or the Alam Haba. Let's go on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Now, in verse 18, 19, and 20. Ahora en el versículo 18, 19, y 20. It mentions he. Who is he Shaul is referring to? Aquí menciona él. Y a quién es que Pablo se refiere cuando él dice él. Okay, so let's read verse 18. 
Vamos a leer el versículo 18. And 19. In 19. I pray that he will give light to your eyes of your heart so that you will understand the hope to which he has called you with what rich glories there are in the, in the inheritance he has promised his people and how surpassingly great is his power working in us who trust him. It works with the same mighty strength he used. Amen? Amen. Who is he? ¿Quién es él? The Father. El Padre. That's what the church doesn't get. Esto es lo que la, la iglesia no capta. Because they ride right over verse 17. Porque ellos se pasaron a través del versículo 17. They're thinking he's talking about Yeshua. Ellos piensan de que están hablando de Yeshua. No, he's talking about the Father. Él está hablando, no, él está hablando del Padre. Because Yeshua already came to do his job, but the Father gave us his plan. Porque Yeshua ya vino y el Padre y nos dio el plan. Who's the one who's going to give us an inheritance? ¿Quién es que nos va a dar una herencia? It's the Father. Es el Padre. Because remember Genesis 12? Porque recuérdense Génesis 12. The Father promised an inheritance to Abraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov forever. El, el Padre eh, dio, una, eh, dio una herencia a Abraham, Yitzhak, y Yaakov eh, por siempre. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Let's read verse 18 through 21 again. Vamos a leer el versículo 18 al 21 una vez más. I pray that he will give he will give light to your eyes, to the eyes of your heart, so that you will understand the hope to which he has called you. What rich glories there are in the inheritance he has promised his people, and how surpassingly great is his power working in us who trust in him. It works with the same mighty strength he used when he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead and seat him at his right hand in heaven. Far above every ruler, authority and power, dominion and any other name that can be named either in the Alam Hazet or in the Alam Haba. Many people think Yeshua raised himself from the dead. Muchas personas piensan que Yeshua se levantó él mismo de la muerte. But in verse 20, But in el versículo 20, we see that it is the Father who raised Yeshua from the dead. Vemos que es el Padre quien levanta a Yeshua de la muerte de regreso. Because, let's read verse 20. Vamos a leer el versículo 20. Isn't this an amazing verse? No sería que esto es un versículo bien impresionante. Because so much of the church thinks that Yeshua raised himself from the dead. Hay tanto que se habla en la iglesia de que Yeshua se levantó él mismo de entre los muertos. When he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead and seat him at his right hand in heaven. Wow, that, if you haven't underlined that one in your Bible, I think you should underline that in your Bible. Bueno, si no has subrayado ese versículo, esa parte de este versículo en tu Biblia, te sugiero que lo hagas. And ya this mismo. also proves in verse 20. Y esto también nos comprueba en el versículo 20. That they are separate entities. Que ellos son una identidad separada. They are not the same. Liz, did you know that? Could you prove that? That pizza and broccoli do not go together. <laughs> Have broccoli today. You can sit over there, you gaseous man. <laughs> You're just so talkative. Did you know this one to be able to prove it to your to your shin friend in Africa? Yeah, I do know it because I well, I was never too fond of that of But could you prove it? That they are one? No, that they are separate. Psalm 110, verse 1.
which you can see in verse um, 16. Well, he's seen separate in verse 20. Yeah, 15, but it's real clear in verse 20. When it, you know, it says, when he worked in the Messiah to raise him from the dead. So that somebody's alive and somebody's dead. Okay, it's a very cool part. All right, let's go on to any other questions about that? Isn't that a great part? Yes, because I, I think this gives more, like, like Robert said, to our, the Christians, this Ephesians here tells us, for those people that like to argue, no, God and the Father, the mystery of the Bible that God only himself knows, uh, it's like, God, it was, I don't understand when people say the mystery. There's no mystery. The Bible tells, it tells you everything. If you read it, everything is stated in there. God did not live. Why would he live, uh, leave a mystery for us to God? It's like, oh, for me to know, for you to find out type of thing. I don't think God would work like that, but obviously a lot of Christians think like that. And it's, it's our amazing. job to, with, this, with these verses, prove them literally that it's not like that. Yeah, and this is one of their favorite books to read. And they never read that. What do you think? Uh, hey, Tova, are you there? You got a lot of Christian friends. Okay. Let's uh, go on to the next part. Vamos a la siguiente next slide. Vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. All right, so we can finish this chapter today and only have five parts to 10 hours of 12 hours of chapter one. Asher, what do you want to say? Asher, come here. You want to preach? All right, verse 22 and 23, section number 8. Sección número 8, versículo 22 y 23. Also, he has put all things under his feet and made him head over everything for the messianic community, which is his body, the full expression of him who fills all creation. So who gave Yeshua authority? Entonces, ¿quién fue que le dio la autoridad a Yeshua? That's the Father. Fue el padre. That means they're separate. Esto significa que ellos están separados. And he puts everything into Yeshua's management, under Yeshua's management. Y él deja todo a cargo de Yeshua. He doesn't say he owns it. Él no dice que él es dueño. He, fa the, father is, the father is giving it to his son to manage it. El padre, esto no significa que Yeshua es el propietario, el dueño. Aquí dice de que el padre fue quien dejó a Yeshua en cargo de todas las cosas. Because verse 22 says, made him head over everything, not owner over everything. Porque en el versículo 22 dice que él lo hizo cabeza, de, eh, lo hizo, eh, make him head, que él lo hizo cabeza de todas las cosas, mas no, mas no el dueño de todas las cosas. Okay, now verse 22 says under his feet. Ahora el versículo 22 dice por debajo de sus pies. In some translations it uses the word subjugation. Um, en algunas Subject. En, en algunas traducción dicen sujeto. And it's G5293. Y es la palabra G5293. G5, this is very important. Esto es muy importante. Because you see, he's not the owner. Porque te das cuenta de que él no es el dueño. Because of the definition that, of the word. Por la, por la definición de la palabra. Number one means to arrange under. Eh, número uno significa eh, arrange under. Eh, arrange under. Like put in order. Como ponerlo en orden. Okay. Number four. Número cuatro. To submit to one's control. Someterse al control de, de alguien. He's not saying he's owning it. He's putting it under his control. Él no está, aquí él no está diciendo de que él es el dueño, más sino que lo está poniendo bajo el control de Yeshua. This is a very important understanding. Este es una, una, un entendimiento muy importante. Now let's move on to the next slide. Ahora vamos a la siguiente diapositiva. Because we're still working on verse 22. 
Aún seguimos trabajando en el versículo 22. Because it said made him head. Porque dice lo, lo hizo por cabeza. This is G2776. Esta es la, la palabra G2776. Ok. That means the head of both men and animals. Y esto que significa la, la definición número uno, que es cabeza de ambos, el hombre y los animales. Definition number two. La definición número dos. Supreme chief. El, la, el chief sería el cabezante, jefe. el jefe supremo. Now here is the key to understanding he's a, in charge, but he's not the owner. Aquí está la clave de que, para entender de que él está a cargo, más él no es el dueño. Master, Lord, a husband. Eh, sería un maestro, maestro, un maestro, eh, un Dios, un Dios o, una, o un esposo. Ok. Now, the husband owns the wife. El esposo es dueño de la esposa. Scripturally. Eh, de acuerdo a las escrituras. But she's also a daughter of the Lord. Pero ella también es hija de nuestro Señor. She has her own soul. Ella tiene su propia alma. So he can own the body, but he can't own the soul. Tú puedes ser dueño del cuerpo, mas no, eres, no puedes ser dueño del alma. So here, verse 22. Entonces aquí en el versículo 22. He puts everything under Yeshua's control. Porque todas las cosas están bajo el control de Yeshua. To run everything for the Father. Para entonces así eh, eh, llevar acá, eh, ser, eh, estar en cargo de todas las cosas del Padre. Ok. Now, these, this is very important to understand. Esto es una, eh, un entendimiento muy importante. As next week we go into chapter 2. Y conociendo de que el próximo la próxima semana vamos a estar eh, comenzando el capítulo número 2. Because I think chapter 2 is one of the most misunderstood chapters of the New Testament. Porque yo creo que el capítulo 2 de Efesios es uno de los capítulos más mal interpretados de la de toda la Biblia. Okay. Also this head también eh, la eh, la cabeza in verse 22 en el versículo 22 it also has it an understanding of the one who gives extreme punishment. Ahora esto también tiene un entendimiento de también tiene un entendimiento de aquel que da un castigo muy severo. Now why is that important? Ahora por qué es esto muy importante? Because Yeshua said in Matthew 7. Porque Yeshua dijo en Mateo 7. I'm going to tell you to your face, I don't know you. Él te lo yo te lo diré en tu cara, yo no te conozco. And when Yeshua says that to you in heaven, y cuando Yeshua te diga esto en el cielo, He's going to be dealing out some extreme punishment because you're going to hell. Él va a estar delegando un, un castigo muy severo porque Él te va a estar enviando al infierno. All right. Any questions or comments as we close? ¿Alguna pregunta o, 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 o comentarios a, hasta ahora? Little boy with the blue hat. <laughs> Shaul is speaking to them, is reminding them what Yeshua says. In the verse 18 says, and Yeshua came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. He's been given authority in Matthew 28. En Mateo 28, a él se le fue dado la autoridad. Not ownership. No el ser dueño. Authority. Authority. La autoridad. And what? Ephesians. Oh, in Ephesians. Okay. Sorry, I didn't hear. As in verse 22, it says, And he put all things in subject and subjection. And he is using here the, the word, the et. And et is always the use to the Father. And the et. Mm -hmm. He put those things in subjection. He gave it to them. Yeah, they're using the same Hebrew word. Okay, anybody else questions or comments? Anybody on WebEx question or comment? Sorry about the stream tonight. We'll figure it out. Or we'll make our own stream. We're going to figure out what's going on with Periscope. All right.
Well, we close in prayer, and then we can have more questions in here. You guys miss pie, apple pie, and banana pie. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings today. Thank you, Lord, for your hand in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful letter from your servant, Shaul. Your name is Yeshua, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. Shalom, Havarim. Shalom. This is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman. I would personally like to thank you for tuning in to The Remnant's Call each and every week. You can listen to the full message on our website, BethGoyim.org. If you have drawn closer to the King of Kings, learned more about Him today, we are blessed. If you are blessed by these messages, please consider a donation to our ministry. You can go to our website, BethGoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. And click on the donate button. You do not have to have a PayPal account to donate. All you need is a debit card. Once again, thank you very much for listening to The Remnant's Call. If you have not taken your first steps to be born again, just ask God's help. Remember, it's His loving grace that has come to find you. No one is worthy or able to reach God, but God can reach us, and He's reaching out to you now. Just open your heart and let Him in. His arms are open, and the blessing of salvation and eternal life are waiting for you. Don't let it wait any longer. Shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you and give you his shalom. Shalom. My name is Messianic Rabbi Andrew Dinnerman, and I invite you to come to visit our congregation. If you are in the tri-state area, come out and visit with us on Shabbat. We are a congregation of Jews and Gentiles, living as one in the Messiah Yeshua. BGMC is a place of true worship. The focus never wanders from the Hebraic roots of our faith. Beth Goyim is rooted in the Word of God from Bereshit through to the book of Revelation. Messiah's strong words against man-made tradition are carefully recorded in Matthew 7. That is the reason we only follow the straight-up instructions found in Scripture, truly the way, the truth, and the life. If you're looking for a deeper walk with Adonai, come out for our Tuesday evening Bible study called Messianic Torah Time. Come, spend the day with us on any Shabbat. We start at 11 a.m. with the sound of the ancient Hebrew shofar. Next, we offer our King praise and worship in English, Hebrew, and Spanish. After worship, we review the headlines in the previous week's news from around the globe, especially news from the Holy Land, Israel. We don't just list the news headlines as current events, but we comb through the scriptures, searching for clues to understand what they mean and then to help pinpoint prophetically our current position on Adonai's clock. After digesting all that modern information, we leave the world behind as we journey with our Adonai deep into his eternal word not with just one or two scriptures, but usually seven or more scriptures. The spiritual nourishment and the richness of his kingdom become accessible to the ones who share this special time and seek them out. The day does not end there. Because Shabbat is so special to him, there is always so much more that our king desires to share. So instead of separating and leaving, we stay together as a family for potluck lunch and an afternoon study of our King's Word. We close this Shabbat together with the reading of the New Week's Parashah. That's the Torah portion. Even after those blessings, many of us just can't get enough. So the members bring prepared homemade foods to share while we all enjoy an uplifting movie together. 
If all that information is not quite enough, you can check out our website where you will find over 200 video teachings and biblical Holy Day studies. Under Messianic Torah Time, the Hebrew Roots button, you'll discover free studies on many, many different topics, including PowerPoint slide presentations. If Beth Goyim sounds like a place you'd love to visit, but you live outside the tri-state area, there is still a way to connect with us. We stream live on the internet on Tuesday, Thursday, and Shabbat. The website is www.bethgoyim.org. That's B-E-T-H-G-O-Y-I-M.org. Our phone number is 973-338-7800 or 978-2-YESHUA. That's 978, the number 2, YESHUA. Shalom.